my service at this time. Everyone in their perspective, please let us stand. And thank the Lord for our Sunday school lesson. I was studying that lesson. I really got a, a good insight into the worship and part of our salvation. And I thank the Lord for what he has given us. And Thursday night, we went back over last week's Sunday school lesson and got a little more from that. And I thank the Lord. For it's nothing like knowledge. And we thank the Lord this morning. Good morning. Let's bow our head in a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Father, we come to give you the honor and the glory this morning in Jesus' name, Father. Father in heaven, we thank you this morning, Father, for Liberty United Worship Center. Each and every one of the saints, one by one and name by name, Father. Continue to watch over and guide them and bless them, Father. Keep them from all hurt, harm, and danger in Jesus' name, Father. Father, this morning we ask you to bless the children of liberty, Father, in Jesus' name, Father. Let your angel continue to surround them, Father, in Jesus' name, Father. Father, we ask you this morning to bless the praise team, Father, in Jesus' name, Father. Bless the musician, bless the word, Father, that comes forth, Father, hallelujah, in Jesus' name, Father. Father, we ask you to bless the shepherd of this house, Father, in Jesus' name, Father. Continue to keep him on a straight and narrow path, Father, with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, Father, of your word, Father, in Jesus' name, Father. Bless his family, Father, in Jesus' name, Father. Keep them from all hurt, harm, and danger, in Jesus' name, Father. Father, we ask you this morning to bless the absent part of the church, Father, in Jesus' name, Father. You know the consequence of each and every one of them, Father, why they are not present here this morning, in Jesus' name, Father. We thank you, Father, that any that are sick, Father, we ask you to heal them, Father. Hallelujah. Based on your word, Father, by your stripes, they are healed in Jesus' name, Father. Your word goes out and it cannot come back void, Father. Father in heaven, we ask you to continue to bless Deacon Courtney, Father. Whatever situation it is, Father, we know that you're going to make it better for his life, Father. In Jesus' name, Father, we give you the honor and the glory for him this morning, Father. In Jesus' name, Father. Bless his family, Father. In Jesus' name, Father. Father, we ask you to continue to bless the surrounding part of this church, Father. Open their minds, their hearts, their soul, Father, that they want to seek you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father. We thank you this morning for all you're doing in each and every one of our life, Father. In Jesus' name, Father. Hallelujah. We've given you the honor and the glory this morning, Father. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. amen. We're going to have our scriptures read by Deaconess Burke. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord again. Our scripture is coming from Matthew 6, verse 5 to 15 on the back of our program. And it reads, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not, not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in the, corn, in the corner of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetition, as the heathens do, for they think that they shall be heard, of, heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye need, off before you ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, 
neither will your father forgive your trespasses. May the word of God be a blessing to the hearer. We now have an announcement by Sister Nadine. Sister Nadine. Sister Nadine, announcement. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Um, our church announcements are as follows. We have Sunday school every Sunday morning at 9.30. Morning worship service at 11 a.m. Um, we have our singles ministry on uh, Monday nights at 7.30. Tuesday nights we have Bible study at 7.30 taught by Pastor Boone. Wednesday is our church fast day. And Thursday nights we have our spiritual growth class at 7.30, and Saturday mornings we have prayer at 6 a.m. I don't think there's any new announcements um, for this week, Deacon Johnson. No? Okay. All right, so we'll go ahead and start our praise and worship for today. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. I tell you, I just thank God. I just thank God so much. I, I, I can't help myself. I thank Maria. I've been saying it this week. I thank God for using her for that message the week of Thanksgiving about just giving thanks to God, you know. Because um, sometimes you can get so wrapped up in everything that's going on around you that you just feel you just lose sight of just giving God thanks for just thinking of you as an individual to say, oh God, I can't believe you thought of me to save me, to pour your spirit within me. Because I'm sure he could find so many other people that he can look down on and can choose, but he chose you and that's so much to be thankful for. I just thank God for him just being who he is, just being God by himself. And I just, I just need him. I don't know about anybody else, but I know for myself that I need him. I need him every day of my life. I need him. Life wouldn't be worth living if I didn't have Christ in my life. And I just thank him for that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. You're so worthy, God. You're so worthy to be praised, God. And I lift you up this morning, Lord. God, I put my sins before you this morning, Lord. Anything I've done that's not like you, Lord, I put it before you this morning, God. And I ask you for strength, Lord. Strength not just to go through today, God, but to go through the week next week, God. Father, anoint us afresh to be a witness to somebody, Lord that they will know, Lord Jesus, know you for the parting of their sins, God. I just love you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I lift you up, Jesus. I thank you this morning, Lord, not because of anything you've done, Lord, the blessings, Lord God, the material things, Lord, but just for you being you, God. Hallelujah. Just for your blood that was shed on the cross, Lord just for you, Lord Jesus, loving me unconditionally, Lord. I know within myself that I don't deserve you, Lord God, but I thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy, Lord. Hallelujah. I thank you for keeping me every day, Lord Jesus. I thank you for having mercy on me, Lord Jesus. I thank you for extending your mercy, Lord, and your unconditional love every day, God. I thank you, Lord, for a word, Lord Jesus, to keep pressing on, God. I thank you, Lord, that nothing, Lord Jesus, will separate me from you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace grace. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're so worthy to be praised, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
You're so worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. I confess my need for you this morning, Lord God. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. I need you, Lord Jesus. I need you, Lord. Fill us this morning, Lord God. Fill us up more and more of you every day, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're worthy, Lord. Hallelujah, You're Jesus. Worthy. Hallelujah. You're worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're worthy, Lord Jesus. I need you, 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 Lord Jesus. I can't do anything without you, Lord. I need you this morning, Jesus. Hallelujah. I reverence you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. I magnify your name, Lord. Hallelujah. I lift you up Jesus hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Jesus I reverence you Lord I bless your name Jesus I honor you right now Lord Jesus I honor you right now Lord Jesus I honor you Lord Jesus I lift you up Lord I magnify your name Jesus hallelujah Jesus you're worthy to be praised God Hallelujah, Jesus. Where would I be without your presence, God? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. Just want to think. 
to thank. I just want to thank. I just want to thank. I just want to thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For being Jesus. so good. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. For opening doors, Jesus. for making hallelujah. ways, Lord God. I thank hallelujah, you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus. I thank you for who you are, hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Being so good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's raining. It's raining. It's 
raining. It's raining. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. And let it rain, let it rain. I feel the rain, 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 it's raining, it's raining. 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 It is raining. Open the blood gates of heaven and let it rain. Let it rain. Open the blood gates of heaven. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 But I've been sick in my body and I need him to open the floodgates of heaven. Hallelujah. And let it a wellness. Let wellness rain down on me. Hallelujah. You might not need anything. Hallelujah. But I still need him to open up the windows of heaven. Hallelujah. And rain down all my needs. Hallelujah. I need him to supply the money that I need. Hallelujah. I need him to supply the transportation. Hallelujah. I need him to supply the salvation. Hallelujah. I need him to supply the peace that I need. Hallelujah. Open the windows of heaven. Hallelujah. Let it flood and rain down on me. Hallelujah. Sometimes you just need to get into that place, hallelujah, where you're praising God, hallelujah, and you can feel that rain, hallelujah. You can feel, hallelujah, that the blessings, hallelujah. You can feel that help, help is on the way, hallelujah. I can feel the rain, hallelujah. I can feel the rain, hallelujah. I can feel my help coming. I can feel him, hallelujah. I can feel that he knows I need him, hallelujah. And I know he's about to supply my need, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I feel the rain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I feel the rain. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. I feel the rain. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. I feel the rain. Yes, I feel the rain. Hallelujah. I feel the rain. 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 It's raining. 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 It's raining.
It's raining. It's raining. It's raining. It's raining. It's raining. It's raining. It's raining. It's raining. It's raining. Hallelujah. It's raining. 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 Hallelujah. All my needs are met. Hallelujah. According to his riches and glory. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Hallelujah. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord Jesus. We honor you right now, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are so worthy to be praised, Lord. Hallelujah. So worthy. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless Glory. your name, Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I praise you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Now, I don't know about you, but I refuse to come to the house of the Lord and don't give Hallelujah, God some praise. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's just too good for that. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord Rise among us, let the glory of the Lord rise among us, let the praises of our King rise among us, let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Let, it rise. let the songs of the Lord. Rise among us, let the songs of the Lord rise among us, let the praises of our King rise among us, let it rise. among us let the shout of the lord rise among us let the praises of our king rise among us let it rise oh let it rise oh let it rise 
Let the dance of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Get some movement. Oh, come on, you praising God, not me. Move it. Oh, let it rise. You don't have rhythm, clap your hands. Let it rise. Let the dance. Come on. Come on, boogie boy. Let the dance of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Faces in here. I'm not gonna 
introduce my pastor because everybody here knows him. So I'm not going to introduce my pastor because everybody in here knows him. Um, but I know that we all heard that Pastor Boone preached the building down in Georgia. So we're expecting the same here today. Although we do get it every time he does preach. So we are spoiled, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> so I'm here to uh, not introduce, but I'm bringing up our own pastor, Samuel D. Boone, back from Georgia. <laughs> Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. Praise the Lord. How many of y'all glad to be in the house amen. of the Lord today? Amen. Amen. God has been good to us. And he blessed us to go on the highway to come back safely. And uh, to touch some lives while we was there in the revival. We thank God for it. But God is everywhere, y'all. Y'all know that? Amen. He is everywhere. And the thing is, it's so good that nowhere you can go, he's not there. So that's, that's good hope to know that he's everywhere at the same time. Anywhere I can go, I know my God can be reached at any place, time, or area. We thank God for his many blessings. Now, if you have your Bibles with you today, we're going to... We're going to go to a familiar scripture. Let us go to the book of Numbers, the 21st chapter of the book of Numbers. I left my glasses at home. Thank God for Miss Yvonne giving me these small glasses, but I guess they'll work for me today. All right. All right. If you have Numbers, the 21st chapter, we're going to read from verse 4 to verse 9. It'll be on the back of your programs. And it reads, And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the souls of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And the people speck against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loath this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bite the peoples, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the peoples came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he takes away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the peoples. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that every one that is bidden, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass, and he put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bidden any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Amen. Just before you close, if you have your Bible, go turn me to St. John. Just want to read a, a relating scripture with this in St. John, the third chapter. If you don't have your Bibles, I'll just read it out of mine. If I want. St. John, the third chapter. Started from the 14th verse. Do we have it, everybody? Third chapter in the 14th verse, it said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Remain standing for a moment of prayer at this time. Today we'll be talking about a simple act 
of faith. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh Lord, we thank you for the many blessings and your love and kindness. We thank you for Lord for these thy peoples. Father, we pray a blessing upon each and every one that's here this morning. We pray that your word will go forth, that it would edify, that it would build up, that it would set free, Father, that it would heal in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray as this word go out, Father, through the internet, Father, and for those that are here, Father, that it touch lives, oh Lord, change hearts, oh Father. And we ask this all in the name of Jesus Christ. And let the church say, Amen. Amen. Give an honor to the Spirit of Christ. To the deacons, saints, and friends, we thank God for this moment and for this hour. To be used as an instrument in his hand unto his glory and unto his praise. I like sometimes going back over some of the, the old sermons that I used to preach. And sometimes it's almost like I say it's taking me back to the basics. I like to speak about faith because faith is very important to a child of God. And when you're talking about going back to the basic, you need to understand faith in order to understand this, what we're talking about today, the simple act of faith. It says in the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, in the first verse, it says this here. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It says it's the evidence of things not seen. If you have your pen, those first three words in that verse say, now faith is. If you look at it, now faith is, huh? Now, these words really are referring to a, a present tense, huh? God's trying to show us something. He's trying to reveal us something about faith that's, that's very important. Now faith is. It's in the present tense. It's a now faith is the substance of things hoped for. In other words, faith is the substance of things hoped for. And it's always in the what? The now. If faith is not in the now, it's not faith. And if it's not faith in the present tense, it's not the substance of things hoped for. You can't wait till tomorrow to believe. You need it now. When you ask God for it, you need it now. All right? And then it says in the book of Mark, 11th chapter and verse 24, this is Jesus speaking to the peoples. And I want you to, when it says ye, he say, therefore I say unto ye, say you. All right? And I'm going to read it that way. It says in Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. This is what Jesus said to you. He said, when you pray, he said, believe, huh? That you receive them, and you shall have them now the question is always asked when are you going to believe you receive what you ask for in prayer and jesus statement to us he says when you receive the answer or when you pray he said when you what pray you shall believe when you pray that you what receive that's right now if i start my prayer at three o'clock that's when i believed huh it's right now. huh? Then it says also, down in Hebrews 11 and 6, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, we have a pen, underline that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That phrase, that he is, is in the present tense. And it's, it's more than just believing that God exists. It's believing that he is in the what? The now. He's present now to do what you need. And so your faith has to be in the now, in the present tense. Huh? You can't, like I said, you can't put it off to tomorrow. You can't put it off in the past. It has to be now. The moment you pray, the moment you ask God, you have to have faith. And the Bible says that faith that is in the now is the substance of things. Huh? You, you always hear people say, I believe God when it happened. But that's too late. Huh? You don't need to believe God 
when it happens. You need to believe God when you ask, when you go to him in prayer. The moment you go to him in prayer, release your faith in God that is now. huh? And that faith, if you have that faith, that's the substance of the things you desire. Now I'm going to read something that I wrote down there. If you have the substance, huh? Huh? You sometimes you don't have it what you call the physical or the tangible thing that you touch, but you have the substance. And what I mean by the substance, when they built this building, before any of these walls were put up or these poles were put up, they had substance outside. You looked outside, they had rows of, of bricks. Hadn't been cemented together, hadn't been put together. They had wood out there. It hadn't been put in place, but it was out there. They had cement out there. Huh? They had dirt out there. Huh? They had wiring. Like, all that was just the substance. It was the raw material. But the thing is, the Bible says faith is the substance. It's the raw material. And once you got the raw material, the raw material will manifest the thing that you are desiring. In other words, without the faith, you can't get what you're looking for. Without the bricks, without the wood, without the cement, you can't have this building. But once you get the wood, once you get the bricks, once you get the building, once you get the cement, then you can say, I got the material to have this building. God says in his word, without faith is impossible to please him. He can't work with nothing if you ain't got nothing. You have to have something in order for him to work with. That's why he always calls on you to believe. That's why he always calls on you to have faith. That faith that you have in God's word gives him the raw material that he needs to manifest what you desire in your life. And the thing is that this here, when I think about it, some of the things that God has done for me, because he took that raw material that I presented to him and he brought to me the things that I desire. And so the thing is this, faith is the substance of things hoped for, is the evidence of things not seen. And then we think about those things. What things is faith the substance of? You ask yourself that question. What things is faith the substance of? It's the promises of God. Those are the things. When God gives you a promise, those are the things. Faith gives you the substance to bring those promises that God has given you to pass. Huh? If you, you, you know, you just can't just pray for things that God ain't promised you. But if God promised you some things, then you can have the faith which provides the substance which breaks God brings it to pass in your life. And that's just basic faith. That's all it is, just basic faith. Now, when we think about our text, and you look at the, the fourth verse, and it says, And as they journeyed from Mount Hur by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom, and the souls of peoples were much discouraged because of the way. You know, a lot of times when we begin to think about the easy ways to get things done, I don't want to believe God because I want it right now. I don't want to wait on anything. I want to be like Burger King. I want to have it my way. I want it to be done when I feel like I want it to be done how I want it to be done. But the thing is, that this is sometimes the way is hard. Sometimes the way is difficult. Sometimes, you know, we, we have to change in order to accomplish what God has for our lives. And the thing is that this here, the children of Israel, the Bible says they had just won a battle. They prayed unto God, they asked God to defeat their enemy, and God gave their enemy into their hands. And just a little while later, huh? You know, we, we, it, it amazes me that after a great victory, how they turned on God because of the way that God took them. You know, some people's in their life, they can only do things a certain way. You want to flip somebody up, change. <laughs> change the way. I mean, all you got to do is change is to just take the pen from the right hand and put it on the left hand, and you'll flip them. Huh? All you got to do is just, just put a detour on a road that they normally travel and say you got to go. They flip. They, they get all excited. They don't know what to do. And sometimes we, we have our ways of doing things, but then God sometimes want to change that. 
And, and I'm going to tell you something. Change is not easy to accept. Everybody want to know, well, why I got to do this? Or why I got to go this way? But sometimes to get to what God would have for us in our life, he might have to take us a different route than he took someone else. Everybody might want to go the same way, but God said that's not the way for you. You understand? And so we might want to have a different, a different way. And so God said, I'm going to change up. God told the children of Israel, said, I'm going to do something today that you ain't going to be able to understand. huh? You ain't going to even know. You know what God did? Everybody believed that once they had the Ark of the Covenant, that they could not lose a battle. huh? We got God's presence. We got the Ark, and nobody can whoop. But God said, I'm going to do something that you ain't going to believe. You see, God sometimes, he'll flip us. We sometimes, we get so into the routine until we just can't believe that it'll work another way. Or God ain't going to do a certain thing. And so the thing is that this here, they were so confident in the Ark of Covenant, they didn't think about the way they lived. They didn't think about the way they looked at God or how they honored God. And they just think all they got to do is just carry their Ark of Covenant like some of us. All we think we got to do is carry our Bible, and that's going to do it for you. But I'm here to tell you, you got to do more than just carry your Bible. You got to have something inside of you. And it's more than what's on the outside, but it's what's inside of you that God is looking at. And so they just thought that they could just, just carry this ark and they would get the victory over their enemy. I know you said the word, oh, be gone, Satan. But Satan ain't going nowhere if you ain't got nothing in you. You can ask the, the, the sons of Zephyrdee. They used the name of Jesus and they spoke to a demon, but that demon said, I don't know you. I know Jesus. I know uh, Paul, but I don't know you. Just because you use that name, you got to have some power behind that name. And they thought that this, if they just carried the ark and they just went in the battle. The high priest, I I mean, uh, the sons of, uh, of Esau, they, they just say, we just carry this ark. We, we're going to win. And, and in fact, the Philistines, when they heard them, they said, oh, the ark of covenant is in the land. And, and the children of Israel, they roared because they just say, oh, man, we got a sure victory. All because they was going through the motions. All because they just had the, no faith. No faith at all. See, see I'm going to tell you something. It's, it, it'll work. But you got to mix it with faith. They just thought the ark brought the victory. No, it was the faith in the ark that brought the victory. But they didn't have no faith. And so the Bible says that when they went into battle, that the Philistine defeated them and took <coughs> their ark of covenant. Man, everybody flipped. Everybody couldn't believe. The priest died. <laughs> The ark was taken. The army was defeated. I mean, that was a shock to everybody. And, 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 and even Eli, he died. He fell back on his chair, and he died. Everybody was flipped. We couldn't believe God didn't work. God didn't do, uh, didn't win the battle for us. But I'm gonna tell you something. Just knowing scriptures that you're more than the conqueror. Just knowing scripture that I can do all things through Christ. Don't bring you the victory. You got to have faith. So God said, I do something different. God says, see, the things that change in our lives sometimes flips us because we just can't believe it'll work that way. And so sometimes God takes us a new way just to see how we will react. <laughs> you know, because, uh, you know, sometimes people they, um, get kind of confused and they begin to wonder, they say, well, is God still here? <laughs> oh, because it didn't work the same way. You understand? But he's still there, huh? It, faith will let you know. He, he's still there. But, but God took them in a, another way. It couldn't go through Edom. So the peoples had to go another way. And that way, the Bible said it was difficult. It was hard. And I'm here to tell you something else. A lot of the things that we find ourselves in is because of our own doing. A lot of times, the road that we're on, we put ourselves on that road, huh? A lot, God had a good road for us. God had a good path for us. But because we wouldn't accept what God said by faith, we started doing things that we put ourselves on this hard road. Huh? We put ourselves in this difficult position. You understand? God told them 38 years ago, he said, go into the promised land. I've given it to you. And all you got to do is go in and receive it. But they said, no, we can't go in there. We, we can't defeat those enemies over there. We can't defeat those giants. So 38 years later, 
<coughs> they find themselves going on the wilderness path, huh? They didn't have to go in this wilderness path. They didn't have to go these difficult ways. All they had to do was just accept God's promise, take God at his word, and receive some rest. But now, all of a sudden, now, they find themselves on this difficult path. And, they, and, and I'm going to tell you something. When you find yourself on a difficult path, sometimes it makes you kind of eerie, kind of make you kind of upset kind of make you kind of bad, but I'm here to tell you that some things we get ourselves in, we can't get ourselves out as easy as we got ourselves into it, huh? You see, if they'd have done what God said, they wouldn't have got themselves into this mess. But sometimes people want to get out of mess as quick as they got in the mess. But I'm here to tell you, it don't work like that all the time. I found out in the stock market, you can lose your money faster than you can get your money back. You'll lose $10,000 in one day. It might take you two months to get those $10,000 back. You say to yourself, good gracious. You mean just that one day cost me two months? Yes. Some things that you do in life cause so many problems in your life it just don't happen just like that you see and the thing is that this here israel got themselves into this mess huh now they got to go this difficult way now they got to go this difficult path all because 38 years ago they wouldn't receive god's word they wouldn't believe god and so all these things that's going on in their life all these difficult all these trials all these burdens that's going on in their life they brought it on themselves and one thing about us we will not say it was my fault we're going to blame like Adam. We're going to blame somebody else. But the thing is, is this, is that when we find ourselves in our problems, huh? the thing is we begin to call on God and ask God to help us out. But like I say, sometimes we've gotten ourselves in such a great mess until it's hard to come out of the mess. And in that fifth verse, it says, And the people spake against God and against Moses. He said, Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in this wilderness? He said, For there is no bread, neither is there any water. And our soul loathe this light bread. Uh, you know, they were murmuring against God and against Moses. And the Bible said they were murmuring about what God had gave them to eat. And the thing is, God gave them food from heaven. It was the best food that you could have. In fact, it was called manna, and it was a, a wonderful food. It had a, I had a great taste. And to show you that what God was giving them was the best nutrition that they could have, the Bible mentioned that their feet never swelled. And one sign of a, of a deficiency in nutrition for your body is that your feet begins to swell. So the thing is, this is that when God fed them this manna, this manna gave them all the nutrients and everything that they need to live. But the Bible say, yet they complain. And I'm here to tell you how easy it is to complain against God. Huh? Especially, huh, about some of the things that we think that God didn't do for us. Some of the things that we felt like he should have done for us. How easy it is us to complain. You know what? People complain even about sometimes just the seats in the church. Huh? And yet they'll go to a football or a basketball game where those seats sometimes don't even have a, a backrest for you. And they'll sit there for hours and rile and jump up and down and clap their hands and not make one complaint. But in the house of the Lord, oh, them seats are not comfortable. Oh, they, they could be better seats than that. You complain about the things of God. And see, the thing is about this here, the first thing they begin to play, they complain about God giving them this manna to eat. They say, well, well we, we, we hate this manna. Huh? We don't want this manna. And then they begin to charge God and begin to charge Moses for bringing them into, into the wilderness where there's no water and so that they might die. Huh? They say, look here, we, we, we tired of this way, uh, and we don't want this manna anymore. We, we hate this manna. We don't want it anymore. And then the thing is, is here. They say, you and God is the reason why we're in our predicament. Isn't that something? I'm, I'm, I'm here to tell you one thing about complaining and murmuring. I'm, I'm going to read this to you. It says, 
Whenever a believer finds himself, wherever a believer finds himself, and no matter how difficult it may seem at present, we must not complain. To do so is to insult the Lord. We should think of the Lord regardless of our circumstances. We should be thankful and to say because even if the way is hard, we should pray and ask God to help us what? Through it. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to give thanks when you're grumbling. It's hard to give thanks when you're complaining. It's hard to give thanks when you're upset with God. But the Bible tells us, and it tells us in the book of uh, Thessalonians, let's look at it, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18. I want to show you something now. We, we should give thanks to God. You know, instead of complaining, you ought to thank God, huh, for the things that he's doing for you. Do you have 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18? Do you have it? I'm going to read what it says. Notice what it says. It says, in everything, what? Give thanks. It says, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now, notice what it says. It says, in everything, not necessarily for everything. But in everything, give thanks. Huh? Not for, but in. If I, if I find myself in this predicament, I'm thanking God. But not for the things, huh? The thing is this here. He said, give thanks to God in every situation. And the thing is this here. When we begin to give thanks to God, then we forget about our complaints. And we forget about our mummering. And we forget about all these things that are happening in our life. But the thing is this here. This old flesh, for some reason or another, it just going to worry God and worry God until God gets what? God gets tired. I don't want to worry God until God gets tired. Notice what it says in the law in the sixth verse. It says, and the Lord sent fiery serpents amongst the peoples, and they bite the peoples, and much people of Israel died. If you have your pen, I want you to understand. It said the Lord sent fiery serpents. You know, if, if you only recognize, if you only knew, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to make this statement because I believe a lot of people don't understand or haven't noticed it. If you have not noticed or never gave it a thought, I want to inform you that God does have a hedge around you. Huh? Understand, everything which happens to a believer be it negative or positive, is either caused by God or allowed by the Lord. But a believer belongs to the Lord, and as such, Satan can do nothing against us unless what? The Lord allows it. It's, it's a blessing to know that through our lifetime, God has a hedge around us. And, and I'm so thankful for that hedge because sometimes you forget, and you forget when you begin to mumble. You forget when you begin to complain. You forget how good God is to you, and then you begin to complain. So God said, I'll tell you what. I'm going to let them see how good I am to them and how good I has been to them. God began to just lift that hedge up just enough for them snakes to get in. And I'm going to tell you, when you begin to understand something, them snakes were always there. They always wanted to bite the Israelites. They always wanted to put their poison in them, but they couldn't do it because God, just like he shut the mouths of the lion, he stopped the snake from biting them. Huh? These snakes, not only did they come out from under rocks, the Bible said they came out from under the ground, huh? came from out of the dirt. Huh? They was just that they see. And then the thing is, that this is, they always wanted to bite. Every time your foot stepped by them, they wanted to bite you, but God had some kind of preventive power, some kind of shield where they couldn't bite you. You understand? But it was always there. And the children of Israel, they never realized 
<coughs> that God was protecting them. And so what God said, I guess what I let them know. You understand? You don't understand all the things I'm protecting you from, all the good things I'm doing for you in your life. You don't understand how many times I, I've stopped the bullet from hitting you. I've stopped the car from running into you. I've protected your kids from getting taken. You just don't know. But since you want to complain, I'm going to let you know just how good I have been to you. I'm just going to lift that hedge up just a little. Huh? See, sometimes God let little negative things uh, come into our life in order to wake us up to know all the positive things he's been doing in our life. And so he just lift that thing up and he'll just allow just a little negative things uh, to come into our life. Then you begin to realize boy, my house was alright. Everything was good. Everything was genuine. I enjoyed my marriage. I enjoyed my children. I enjoyed my job. But every now and then you, you get to complaining and you begin to talk against God, God said, let me just lift up this hedge. Let a little negativity come into his life and he'll realize all the things that I've been doing to him. And the thing is that this here, they didn't know that those snakes was always wanting to bite them. It always reminds me of the story about Peter when Peter was sitting at the table with Jesus and Jesus told him, he said, he said Satan has desired you and he want to shift you like wheat. And you see the thing is, Satan has always desire to. He's always went to God and say, God, let me have it. I'll shake him up. And every now and then, God will lift up your head and let a little negativity come into your life. And then sometimes it'll shake you up so bad, you didn't realize. You thought you were so strong. You thought you wouldn't would die for the Lord. Everybody else will leave, but you're going to stay there. God said, let me just lift up this head. Get all that helium out of his brain. Get all that, that big headedness out of him. All that, that arrogance out of his life. Let me just lift up that head just a little bit. Because Satan is asking. He said, I just want to shake him up. Just give me the opportunity. And God lifted up the head. And Satan went right at who? Went right at Peter. Then Peter began to know who actually was keeping him together. Who actually was protecting him. Because once God lifted up that hedge and he began to let that negativity come into our lives, brother, then we begin to know, oh, brother, I was blessed. Oh, brother, I thank God. You know, when you lose a good job and you ain't got no job, God, you begin to thank God. You know, oh, why you was on that job? You say, I'm sick of this job. Can't stand no people on the job. Not knowing that that job was provided for you. And you start complaining to God. I don't know, God, why you gave me this job? Or why you gave me this wife? Why you gave me this husband, or why you put me in this neighborhood, or why you put me in this house, or why you gave me this kind of car. You begin to complain. So God said, let me just lift up the head. He ain't got no car now. He got to catch the bus. Oh, I wish I had my car. He ain't got no house to stay in. He's living in an apartment. Oh, I wish I had my house. Then you begin to bless the Lord. You begin to think how good God was, and you didn't realize that. All oh, while you was complaining, your mind was on you. But God said, I'm the one that's blessing you. I'm the one that's keeping the things out of your life. There are a lot of things that the devil want to do to you, want to bring into your life. How he wants to tear up your marriage. How he wants to tear up your home. But you right there, you done forgot. You don't read your Bible. You don't come to church. You don't pray no more. They forgot all about God. Don't even say thank you, Lord, for waking me up this morning. They forgot all about God. God said, okay, lift it up there. Just raise the curtain just a little bit. Because all Satan needed just a little place. We've seen in the book of Job. Just God, God, just, 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 just let me have him. I can't get to him. This is a promise that God has given His people. The devil can do no more to you than God allows. If he had to ask for permission to attack Peter, it showed you that Peter belonged to somebody else. If he didn't belong to anybody, the devil would come straight at him. But because he belonged to the Lord, he was God's property, he had to ask God for permission to touch his property. And I'm here to tell you, sometimes when we get the mumbling and complaining, we get big-headed, we get arrogant, thinking we all listen, all that, God lifts up that curtain in order to bring us back down to earth. And the Bible says, oh yeah, when they, when they begin to see them serpent <coughs> coming out. It says this here in verse six, 
verse 6 and 7. It says, Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. Thank, I always thank God for intercession. I don't know about you, but I thank God for intercession. I wouldn't have been here today if somebody had not prayed for me. <laughs> wouldn't have been saved if somebody hadn't called my name up in prayer. Huh? Thank God for it, because we can be foolish sometimes. We can find ourselves doing foolish things, but thank God somebody prayed for us. When Jesus told Peter that the devil desired to shift him last week, he said, but I've prayed for you that your faith fell not. I, there would have been times I would have failed, but somebody, somewhere, some place, put my name up in prayer, and God remembered what they said, and God prevented what was the devil trying to do to me. God held me together. Come here to tell you, Peter did worse than Judas. But Judas didn't have Jesus interceding for him. Jesus interceded for Peter. And that's the only thing that stopped Peter from hanging himself or committing suicide. Because Jesus said, I pray for him. There are things that God, because of the intercessions of the saints, and because of the intercession of the Holy Spirit, have kept us from doing it. Thank God the Holy Spirit prays. And it sends up intercessions for us that can't be uttered. I'm so glad I may can't think of it. It may can't come to my mind. Mind, but the Holy Spirit know what I need. It's done search the heart and it knows what I need. And it goes to God in intercession. Intercession is a, is a powerful thing. You know the people must have knew it was powerful because they didn't go to their neighbor. And they didn't go to their animals. They didn't pray to the son. They went to Moses and they told Moses, you go to God for us. You are our minister. You want people praying for you to got some kind of relationship with God. You want somebody who you know God and know God's power. No God can heal. No God can bring you out. I don't want to go to somebody who's just as dumb as, as, a, as a roach. I want to go with somebody who know God and know what God can do. They know God spoke to Moses. They know God led Moses. They know God was with Moses. So we're going to go to Moses because we know Moses got a relationship with God. And because Moses is a minister of God and it doesn't matter how bad they talked about because people talk about you, they turn right around and say, pray for me. You got to put all that to the side because you know that if they turn around and they repent, you got to pray to God and ask God to give them what they need. No matter what they called you, they might have called you a bold buzzard, but it doesn't matter. If they ask you to pray for them, you got to do what? You got to pray. And the Bible said Moses went to God. And he spoke to God. They asked God to take away these serpents. And the thing is that this here, I want you to know something else. God can't work in your life until you confess your sins. As long as you hold on to your sin, you can't get what you need from God. Notice what they say. We have sinned. Oh, yes. That's something that a lot of people in the world don't want to say. That's why they don't want to give their life to the Lord because they don't believe they've sinned. But God can't do nothing for you until you confess your sins. And they said, Moses, we sin against you and we sin against God. We recognize we was wrong. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes some people, they're stubborn and they don't want to admit that they're wrong. But don't you feel an ease, a burden lifted off of you when you turn around to God and say, God, I've sinned against you and I ask for your forgiveness. I'm, I'm so, I tell you, I hate to be walking around with my with my back all bent though, <laughs> like the woman <laughs> with the back <laughs> that was bent over for 13 years. <laughs> I don't want that burden on me <laughs> for 13 years. <laughs> all you got to do is just come to Jesus <laughs> and he'll lift that burden <laughs> off your back. <laughs> he'll take away the pain. <laughs> he'll take away the suffering. <laughs> but you got to admit, <laughs> you got to confess, <laughs> Lord, I've sinned. And the Bible say that, when they admitted that they sinned, that Moses went to God and he prayed unto God to ask God to forgive them for their sins. And the thing about it is this year is that when people say that they confess their sins, you want to see some evidence that they actually 
change their lives. The Bible said that when John was preaching in the river of Jordan, he said the Pharisees and the Sadducees came unto him and confessed their sin. But John said, I, I want to see some, some fruits. I want to see some evidence. I want to really know that you really turned away from your lifestyle and you're really turning your life over to God. And so sometimes when, when, when we say we've sinned and we confess, God want to see that in action. God want to see that we've really turn our backs to that old way of living. In the book of James, it says in James 2.17, it says, even so faith, if it has not worked being dead, being alone. When you have the proper faith, it will produce the proper work in your life. In other words, if you believe the right way, you believe the right things, you'll turn around and you'll live the right kind of life. There's no way I can say I believe that God forgave me of my sin and continue in my sins. Ain't no way in the world I can ask God for forgiveness and continue to do the things that God forgave me for. God said, I want to see some evidence. I want to really know that they really admit it and they really want to change. And so God told Moses this year, he forgave them, but he said, but I want to show them this year. If they really want to get rid of their power, they got to have faith in my instructions. They got to have faith in my word. And so God told Moses, he said, I want you to get a pole. And then he said, I want you to put a serpent on it, a brass serpent, and I want you to set it in the ground and stick it up in the air and say, and whosoever who's been bitten by one of these fiery serpents, if he just look upon this snake on the pole, he shall live. A simple instruction, a simple act of faith. It's not difficult. It's not complicated. It's just looking at a serpent on a pole. And God said, if they look they'll be healed. But do you know we have some nameless in the church and we have some nameless in the world. I want God to do it my way. Why did he tell me to go to these rivers over there in Samaria? They so much better than the Jordan River. But God said a simple act of faith. Go down to the Jordan River. I know you got an incurable disease. But he said I want you to go down to the Jordan River and dip yourself seven times a simple act of faith we you know I'm, I'm so glad ain't you glad because god can ask you to do some serious things he can ask you to clown mount everett and you say god i don't know how to clown mount he ain't gonna do that whatever god gives you to do it's gonna be so simple you're gonna say that's foolish ain't nowhere in the world that'll work and god wants you to think like that because god wants you to know you can't do it the doctor can't do it no for your friends can't do it. The only one can do it is me. And I'm going to give it to you in such a simple way in order that you might understand ain't nothing too hard for God. God can do the impossible. You want to add all these burdens and all these extra weights to yourself. But God say just do this simple act of faith. He say name it, just go down to the river Jordan. Just dip yourself seven times and you'll get your skin just as clean as baby skin. He got mad. Bible said he ruled off. He said, I ain't going to do that. I thought he'd come outside. I thought he'd call on the name of his Lord and touch the, 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 the disease on my body and I would be clean. I ain't talking about going down to that dirty old Jordan River. I want y'all to understand something. It was a dirty old river. But he said, I want you to go down there and I want you to see, I'm going to tell you something. A lot of times God going to ask you to do things that you ain't going to want to do and you ain't gonna want to believe because you're gonna say no I know that it's got to be something better he probably had a pool at his house he said I go jump in my own pool but I want you to understand something if you don't have faith in what God told you to do don't expect to receive what you need because you can't get it unless you follow what he says and a lot of times people want to do it their way and they're not receiving what they need from God but when you do it the way God said it then you put the burden on God. And when you put the burden on God, God say, is there anything too hard for the Lord? It looks like it's impossible to go down to the river Jordan and get what I need because what I got is impossible.
simple. What I got is incurable. But God said it's simple for me. What's so difficult? What's impossible for man? It's a simple act for God. You think God worried because you got an incurable disease? You think God worried because you got all kind of problems going on in your life and you can't find no answer? You think God worried because you hooked on crack and you can't come back? You think God worried because you got HIV and they ain't got no cure? You think God worried because you got cancer? God ain't worried about none of those things. They don't even bring a thought to his mind. God just say, be gone. Be thou clean. Have your eyes open. All these things come out of Lazarus from the grave. He said, I know you always hear me. That's what Jesus said. I know you always hear me. But for those that are around and don't know you can answer prayer, just at a word. He said, I want them to know that you hear me. Even though this boy got maggots. Even though this boy is sick. Even though this boy been in the grave for four days. All Jesus said was, Lazarus, come forth. It didn't matter to him about him being uh, uh, rigor mortis all in his body. It didn't matter to him how, how bad he had been. All he knows is that when he said, come, Lazarus, come on, hopping up out of there. What got me is this. A dead man heard a living man speak. I say, Lord, have mercy. His words went past the natural and reached all the way into the, the spiritual. God spoke to him, but he spoke to his spirit. You see, the thing is, you got to speak sometimes, not to the natural, but you got to speak to that person's spirit because it's that in the spirit where the power resides. And when you speak to that person's spirit, that spirit begins to work on that natural. And whatever that natural condition may be, his spirit will move it out of the way. Cancer don't move unless your spirit say, get out of here. Huh? Sickness don't go nowhere unless your spirit say, get out of here. It, 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 once it gets inside your spirit, once it gets inside your heart, it's got to move because why you are showing that you believe what God said you're showing that you got the faith and you realize that whatever about the doctor said whatever the psychiatrist said God word supersede what's natural God word supersede what I see the Bible say the thing that you look at is temporary but the things that are not seen the thing that you believe God for it's it's eternal I'm so glad when Jesus walked up to that grave, he didn't say, uh, y'all bring my side out here. He didn't say, y'all lay him right here so I could just grab it. But he said, just roll back the stone. That thing that's blocking your faith, God say, just roll back the stone. The, the, the neighbor say, look, that Jordan water is nasty, that he, but he got to roll it back. If he want God to heal him, he got to get over that nasty water and go down seven times. <coughs> if you're not in the word where you ought to be, you won't receive what you need. I got to be in the word where I ought to be. Why things are happening in my home? Because I'm not in the word where I ought to be. Why things are happening in my life? Because I'm not in the word where I ought to be. When God told him to be in Jordan, guess what? If he was going to get healed, he got to be where the word placed him. And if you're where the word placed you, then God can work because you're where you're supposed to be. You are believing what God said and you're going to get what you need because why I'm right where the word says I'm supposed to be things are happening things are going on in my life and I'm starting to think I say well where am I am I standing on holy ground or am I standing out there in the world and things are all going on around here you need to be what God told you to be you need to be standing in his word and so he said just put up this snake on a pole. He said, all you got to do is just, is just look. Now that seems simple. I, 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 get, I get more things just being simple than I do by being complicated. I don't make it no more than what God said. <laughs> if that's all he said, that's all I believe. That's all I do. Huh? Some people say, well, it, it got to be more than that. No, no. That's all he said. 
You see, you can, you can make God's easy command a difficult command because of your opinions and your belief. But I don't make it. That's all he said do. If he said, if he said just look, I'm gonna, oh, that's what I'm going to do because I'm going to believe that's what he said. He said, if you look at that serpent on that pole, he said, I don't care how poisonous the snake was or how terrible the snake bite was or how sick you are. If you can get your eyes upon that snake, he said, I will cure you. I will heal you. Now, look at faith. Faith is the substance. Huh? Huh? It's now faith. It, it ain't tomorrow. It's now faith. When God said it, you got to accept it and believe it. It, it may look crazy. It may not make no sense because I'm here to tell you, they, they saw 23,000 people die. Huh? And, 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 and you see these snakes and how strong their poison is. And you see them dying all around you. And then Moses come up with this ridiculous plan for healing your body, for delivering you from death. He comes up with what you call a ridiculous plan. But I'm here to tell you, what's foolish with God is wiser than any man. You couldn't think of it. Nobody else in the crowd could think of it. Because I'm here to tell you, his ways, not your ways, his thoughts, not not your thoughts. Whatever God does, it might sound foolish to you, but brother, it's better than anything that you could do or think of. And the Bible said all they had to do was just look and be healed. Simple. Just look. Don't, don't, don't make it no, no difficult on yourself. Just, just, just go to that pole and, and look at that pole and believe that that poison that's trying to kill you, trying to take your life, God has got the remedy to cure you. And it's a simple act. And why you say God make it so simple? God wants you to know he did it. We want to do the difficult things. We want to stand outside on the street with our suit on, with our bow tie, sweating all down, passing out pamphlets. Think somebody think we know some kind of God. But all God said you got to do, come and sit in the air conditioned church. <laughs> and you can be safe. <laughs> huh? We, 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 we want to do all the things that God didn't require us. We want to add, add, add. I, I, I just like to take God at his simple word. I don't want to complicate it anymore. And the reason for the pole was because of the serpent and his poison. And Jesus turned around and said, the reason for the cross is because of Satan and your sin. Huh? That sin in your life is poison. And it will cause you to be damned eternally. Now, all he asks for you to do is just believe in him. And when you believe in him, God says you get from eternal death and to eternal life at a simple believing that Jesus died for your sins. When you believe that, God takes your sins away, that which was going to kill you, that which was going to condemn you, God takes that away and he fills you with the precious gift of his Holy Spirit, and which gives you life, and not only life, but eternal life. God said, all you got to do is just what? Look to him. I, Nicodemus came to Jesus looking for something that he could do. He said, I know you are a man sent from God. He said, can't nobody do the things that you do except God be with him. Jesus told him simple. He said, you got to be born again. And Nicodemus didn't understand. But Jesus told him, he said, yeah, you got to be born of the water and you got to be born of the spirit. He still didn't understand. But Jesus just kept on talking to him. He said, just like Moses lifted up the pole with the serpent in the wilderness. He said, so must the son of man be lifted up that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The children of Israel didn't know at that time that that was symbolizing God's way of salvation. They didn't know at the time. All they know is that I was died and it healed me. All they know is at the time that the poison, it didn't work on me. I, why? Because I believed. When God told me just look, I believed. When God said if I look, I I'll live, I believe. When God said that the serpent poison won't kill me, 
I believe. You see, it's, it's not difficult. I look at people and I look at their lives and I'll be saying to myself, if they would just believe God's word, if they would just do what God say do, a lot of the things that's going on in their lives, God would remove it. God would take it out. But they just don't want to believe. They just don't want to follow God's instruction. It's simple. You can't do it. You can't resolve your problem. You can't save yourself. So you got to rely on somebody else. And when God gives you instructions that will bring you out of your situation, that will bring you out of your trouble, you say that's foolishness. But I'm here to tell you, it's the power of God unto salvation. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, if you believe that he died, that God rose him from the grave, the Bible says, thou shalt be saved. All that poison that sin, all that destruction that sin is going on in your life, God said, I can wipe it out with just a simple act of faith. It's not difficult. It's very simple. You know where your shortcomings are. You know what you haven't done that the Lord told you to do. You know how you, you know how the devil got in your house. <laughs> you know how the devil got in your life. <laughs> you know how the devil got into your children. You see, you see, when I say God can lift that hedge up, if you go back and you read the story of Job, when he lift that hedge up, it just, that, that head wasn't around just Job. It was around Job's family. It was around Job's possessions. It was around everything that he had. The devil couldn't touch his sheep. Couldn't touch his ox. Couldn't touch his camels. He couldn't touch his children. He couldn't, he couldn't do nothing. Your hedge sometimes that God has around you is more than just around you. It's around everything you got. <laughs> and you thinking that, oh, no, you grab cumbling and uh, complaining and, and mumbling and grumbling and not knowing that God got a hedge around you and he's protecting you and he's not allowing these things who want to get into your life and shake your life up. He's stopping it from happening because the devil so sure enough want to get rid of uh, Pastor Boone as quick as he can. But I thank God he still got his hedge around me. The devil want to break up my home, break up my marriage, break up my family. But I thank God for the hedge that he got around my life. Devil want to make me sick, sick unto death. But I thank God for the hedge that he have around my life. God is good. It's just a simple getting up in the morning and say, I thank you, Jesus, for waking me up this morning. I thank you, Jesus, for my life, health, and strength. I thank you, Jesus, for your protection. I thank you for your love, your mercy, and your kindness. I thank you for your favor that you put on my children, that you put on my my home that you put on my job. I think it's just a simple act of faith. Just get up in the morning and just say, Lord, I thank you. Who wouldn't want to serve a God like that? Y'all know how much y'all love y'all cars. Y'all love y'all clothes. Y'all love your shoes. <laughs> Look at here, your food that you got in your refrigerator. I know how much you love that. But you know, just at a snap of a finger, you're going to lose it all. Just that one snap of a finger. When God lift that hedge up, you think Satan would wait some time. <laughs> he, he jumped right in it so fast. He couldn't wait. He, he was like he got a running start before the gate was open. You know, they tell you when you, you got everybody got to start off the race at the same, Satan got to jump on it. <laughs> he said, I ain't going to wait for God to pull the, 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 the gun, to shoot the gun for me to get started. I, I, I'm just going to, while they in the mood to get to running, I'm going to start running because I want to get there fast at the gunshot. Huh? And that's how the devil lives. But I thank God because I realize that what I have and my health and my strength is all because of the goodness of the Lord. My children could be in jail. My children could be on drugs. Huh? They could be suffering. But you know, because God said, well, he, he, you know what he said? He said, he said, my servant Job. Huh? Devil wanted Job, but he got everything else but Job. Because Job said, I love the Lord. With all my heart, all my mind, with all my strength. You understand? That's why I don't want to let the devil know where in my life. Because I don't know what all he's going to touch when he come in there. I love all my grandchildren. I love all my children. I love all my sisters and brothers. I love what God has given to me, but I thank God. And all he say, just a simple act of faith. Just get up and praise him in the morning. When he wakes you up, just praise him in the evening when he brings you back home safely. Just a simple act of faith. That's all he's asking. And he's doing so much more 
that he's asking of you. God is a good God. I praise him. No matter what the situation is, I'm thankful because I know God is working in my life. He's still in control. I don't want to get in trouble to a point where he got to allow things negative to come in my life, but I want to stay on his good side. And to be on his good side is just to believe in him. That's all it is. That's all it is, just to believe in him. It's very simple. And the thing is, when God asks you to do something, believe it. It's just, it's just simple. I, I counsel people. I talk to people all the time. And I tell them, I say, this is all you got to do. You, you want peace in your home? This, this is all you got to do. I find out they ain't reading their Bibles. They ain't praying. They ain't going to church like they should. Huh? They ain't doing the things that God requires. I say, well, you got to first start doing your first work over again. And then God began to start getting their homes back together again. People's laid up on their sick bed. Sick as I don't know what. And when you begin to talk to them, you find out. They, they, they ain't called on God. They ain't said, thank you, Jesus, if, for waking me up. You find out. You just tell them, it's just a simple thing. Just praise him. And, and he raised them up off of those sick beds. And these people, they didn't deserve to be healed. But I'm so glad God looks over our actions and give us what we need. <laughs> he don't ask us to pay for it, to earn it. He just asks for you to just to believe. Simple. Today, if that thing's going on in your life that you think is, is so bad that you can't see your way out of it, it's just a simple act of faith. Paul tells us, he said, God can, can deliver us out of all our troubles. He can. He says in his word, he said, I'm the Lord thy God that healeth thee. He says that right in his word. He said, I keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stead on me. He, he gives us those promises. Is there any here today need something in your life? On God to do something for you today. You can come right now and let the Lord work it out for you. It's not hard. It's very simple. Just believe. I, I, I try to pray his promises in the people's lives so they believe. It's a very simple act. It's not requiring you to jump over 15 chairs. It's not requiring you to go out there and run down the street. All he's asking you to do is believe. The Bible said when he made promise to Abraham, he told Abraham, he said, you're going to be a father of many nations. And Abraham didn't have a son until he was 100 years old. <coughs> when God gave him the promise, he was 75 years old. But the Bible say he staggered not at the promise of God. And when God told him that he was going to be a father of many nations and his seed was going to be greater than the stars in heaven, the Bible says these simple words. Say, Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. It's a simple act of faith. It's nothing hard, nothing difficult. Whatever you want God to do, when you ask him, believe it right there. He say, when you pray, he say, believe. Huh? And you shall receive. Huh? It's a simple. I want to read that just before we go into prayer. Mark eleven twenty four. 24. He say, therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray. He said, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. That's what Jesus said to you. So when you ask God at this moment of this time, the moment you ask, that's the moment you believe. And God will do it the rest. So we thank God. Let's, let's pray for these souls today. God will give them what they desire in the name of Jesus.
Jésus. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we thank you for this daughter. We are blessing upon her life, upon her family. Father, we pray, Lord, that you would give her the desires of her heart, O oh Lord. Give her the faith to trust you and believe you, Father. Oh, Lord, even in difficult situations and difficult times of her life, Lord, let her learn to lean upon you. Trust in the Lord with all her heart. And let her lean not to her own understanding, but trust God. And God will bring it to pass in her life. Lord, I agree with her. And Father, you say, well, two shall agree in your name. You say you're in the midst. And by you being in the midst, I know you heard us. And if you hear us, Father, we know that the petition that we bring before you, we're going to receive it. Father, I pray, bring it to pass in her life. We ask it right now in Jesus' name. Anything special? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, you say, if you give, it shall be given unto you. Good measures, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto you. Father, you say, you shall supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. You faith, Father, that you are able to do all things through Christ. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that you are able to give him wisdom, knowledge, understanding, Father to make the right decisions, to go in the right way, to do the right things, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you remove all obstacles and all hindrance from out of his life, O oh Lord. And Father, I pray, Father, for the relationship. I pray for the financial burden, O oh Lord, to be taken away, Father, and that the relationship be great, Father. Take away all the things that would cause confusion, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, but give him peace, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, direct him, O oh Father, for you are a guide to us. You are, Father, a light unto our path, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, strengthen him in the inner man, Father. Complete him with the wisdom and the knowledge that he need. Give him the faith to trust you, O oh Lord, and to lean unto you only. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Anything special? What? Everything? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, she asks for everything, Father, family, her schoolwork, oh, Father, friends, health. Lord, I pray for it all in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, you are able to complete us. You are able to heal us from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. You are able to lead us to make the wise decisions, to make the right choices in life. You are able to give us wisdom and knowledge and understanding, oh, Father. Lord, that she pass all her tests in school, Father. That she be the tops in her class, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, I, I come against all the interference. I come against all the block that Satan would try to hinder her from achieving her goal. And, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, oh, Lord, that, Lord, that you would give her a press, a motivation, of Father, a diligent concern of Father to press on to the mark, to the prize, Lord, to the high calling, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. And oh Lord, we know all things are possible to him that believe. And Father, we pray, Father, you give her the faith to believe you and trust your Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all want to, as a family? Come on. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for this family. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you continue to keep them together as one, on one accord. Father, you will remove all hindrance and all doubt and all confusion that Satan will try to bring in the family. We come against the works of Satan. We pray that peace and love will always be there, a care and a concern for each other, looking out for each other, oh, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, supporting each other. Oh, Father, we pray we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Keep them with their health. Keep them with their strength, O oh Lord. Let your prosperity, your favor, your grace, your mercy always rest upon their lives. We ask this all in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you for it right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
make you good as a soul. A simple act. When you get sick, turn to the Lord. Ask for his healing. When you need a blessing, turn to the Lord. Ask him for a blessing. He said, you have not because you ask not. And God said, before you ask, he said, I'm already got the answer on the way. It's very simple. I love living for God. I love the promises of God. And I believe God's word is true. So we thank God for the word today. We thank God for each and every one that came out to be with us today. And we're going to ask that all stand at this time. Let us lift our hands towards heaven. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Let all the peoples of God say, Amen. Shake somebody's hand and say, Jesus loves you. <laughs> 